At the moment, patients with type 1 diabetes will manage their diabetes by testing their blood sugar several times a day uh, using a capillary blood glucose monitoring device, and then they'll inject themselves with insulin up to six times a day, between two and six times a day. And that's uncomfortable or even painful sometimes. It's cumbersome. It means they have to carry around devices like these pens. Um, and it means really that they're still not always managing to achieve target in terms of looking after their blood glucose, and that leads on to future complications. Now, diabetes is still one of the leading causes of blindness in the developed world. It's still one of the leading causes of kidney failure requiring dialysis in the developed world. It's got an enormous cardiovascular mortality associated with it. So this is a massive health burden, both for individuals and if we think more globally about the health service um, in this country and worldwide. So there's a need for an artificial pancreas because it offers strict glycemic control of blood glucose, therefore reducing many secondary complications such as diabetic retinopathy, kidney failure, heart disease and nerve damage. What the artificial pancreas does is it administers insulin on a continuous 24-7 basis by sampling a continuous glucose sensor. What we do with the bio-inspired artificial pancreas is that we de develop an artificial pancreas which behaves exactly the same as a healthy biological pancreas of the human body. So the hope is that for the future we'll be able to do away with frequent capillary blood glucose testing and frequent insulin injections and we'll move to a continuous glucose monitor which is attached to an intelligent algorithm which is that then drives the insulin pump. And what that does is it takes away the, the frequent injections that patients need and hopefully it takes away a lot of the capillary blood glucose testing that they have to do. And we would hope that in five or ten years time we'll have patients with type 1 diabetes mobile, free living in their own environment, able to eat and drink what they like and able to exercise and take part in any activity that they want to. What we tend to do is replicate the way the cells in your body work, specifically the beta cells which are responsible for sensing blood glucose and releasing insulin. If you were to take a healthy beta cell and gave it some glucose, it would give out a bursting profile such as the one that you see on the screen here. That profile determines how much insulin is needed to, to regulate the blood glucose in a healthy level. What we are seeing here is the output of a microchip which behaves in exactly the same way. That's what we call the silicon beta cell. So what I have in my hand is a continuous glucose sensor which sits on the, the periphery of your body and samples your blood glucose on a 24-7 basis. Next to that is a tiny microchip which also is worn on the body and controls a continuous insulin pump. What's intelligent about the microchip is that it behaves in exactly the same way as the biological beta cell, therefore replicating a healthy pancreas in a continuous 24-7 basis.